Hi everyone, and welcome to our IT Tech Talk series. During the series, we'll talk through different ways to help you make the most of your Splunk instance through short webinars that focus on apps and add-ons, features, best practices, and more. Today's talk, My Start Will Go On, is focused on the technical add-on, or TA, for Windows. My name is Caitlin Reynolds, and I'm a Product Marketing Manager here at Splunk. And my co-host today is Henning, who is a consulting sales engineer here. He's going to walk you through today's talk and do a demo at the end. All right, Henning, take it away. All right. Thank you very much, Caitlin. And this is the agenda. So we're going to do a short intro to the Windows TA and talk about getting the data in. And of course, we'll touch on the out-of-the-box content that comes with it. And I'm also do going to do a little demo on the Windows TA, and at the end, we'll pop up some additional resources that you can go through. So let's begin. So action. So um, I guess you know um, all the apps and TAs that are there, um, most of them actually, are listed on Splunk base. There are a couple of ones that you can actually also look, at, uh, look up on GitHub, but most of the stuff is actually really on Splunk base. And so is the Splunk add-on for Microsoft Windows. This technical add-on is there to do data ingestion for Windows servers, and by the way, also clients. And yeah, by the way, this is the URL. And actually, um, if you have seen that, um, it's one of the most downloaded TAs on Splunk Base. One of the first questions that will always come up when I talk to customers is, of course, which kind of versions of Windows do we support? Of course, this is down to the Splunk Forwarder, of course, at first, but of course also to the add-on, right, to the Splunk add-on for Windows, um, and especially what kind of configuration it supports. So this is a list that I, um, um, that I got out of the documentation. And as you can see, well, the most recent uh, releases are all supported. Um, Windows 8.1, Windows 10. I'm actually running it at home as well on Windows 10 um, workstations or PCs, let's say. Um, so that's working like a charm. Data collection. So the um, data collection is um, has a wealth of items, uh, a list of items that uh, that are being retrieved. Um, of course, first thing is event lock. So event logs are being done, uh, things like the application log and security log and stuff, uh, as well as the performance data. So I guess you know from, uh, from the Windows uh, environment, there is the path one client. So you hit on start um, and then execute, and then there's the path one exe from Microsoft. In there, you can see lots of uh, performance counters, performance counters. And these performance counters are the, are the ones that we can also retrieve. And the Windows TA actually comes with some configuration items um, that shows how to retrieve path one counters. We can also retrieve registry um, information, um, also things when, when things change. And of course, then a text logs as well. Uh, WMI um, is something that is very known in the Windows uh, administration world. And of course, scripts like PowerShell um, can be executed as well. But why would you do that? Um, well, I guess you know, um, since you're using Splunk already, you know this uh, platform can be used for lots of use cases. <clears throat> and um, I actually left this, script, uh, this, um, um, this slide here from the last tech talk about the, uh, the, the standard Unix TA, um, because the same items uh, that are being shown there are also valid for the Microsoft data, of course, for the Windows data. So of course, you can do resource management and capacity planning and, and infrastructure monitoring, of course, the troubleshooting piece of things. So um, um, everything um, that you can do on the Unix data can also be done on the Windows data in terms of use cases, right? <clears throat> so um, like collecting information about what kind of um, releases you have, what kind of applications are being deployed, what is written to the um, um, auto run uh, keys and the registry and things like that. So lots of um, things can be answered through Splunk data. 
um, through the data that you uh, run into the Splunk environment. Okay, so how do you get the data in? The most important bit of, is, of course, the Splunk forwarder, uh, forwarder. You have to have a Splunk forwarder on the uh, Windows system itself. Otherwise, you won't be able to collect any um, any of the um, data like registry and stuff. There are, of course, ways to do this remotely, for example, via a WMI, but uh, it has uh, its troubles because WMI over the network can be tough. Um, it's uh, resource consuming. So I would always recommend you to install a Splunk forwarder on the Windows servers and maybe even clients as well if you have a use case for this. <coughs> um, so directly install it on the box. Um, the forwarder has to have connectivity, of course, to the Splunk server. Um, in blue here in the middle, the Splunk instance. You normally use the standard input port for this. I think I'm going to cover this later on, I guess, uh, in, as well later on. And then, of course, on this data, you can do your search and reporting and, and use it with other apps like ITSI, for example, or Enterprise Security. Um, the data that has been retrieved for, via the Splunk forwarder, um, this is actually controlled by the Windows TA then, so the configuration that comes with the Windows TA. There are actually multiple ways to install the, um, the Windows um, TA together with the, um, um, and, and of course the forwarder as well. Um, of course, you have to have the forwarder at first, and then you can copy over the configuration. Um, the way how to do it is um, you could either use a manual install. Uh, this is what I'm going to show uh, you in the demo. You can also do an automatic install, so to, say, so to say, of the Windows configuration with the deployment server. That's actually what I'm doing at home here as well, and what lots of customers are doing as well. Of course, you can also use your own deployment mechanisms that you might have, like um, SCCM or, well, whatever options you have. Um, I have another customer who is actually using Landesk for this, for deploying the configuration. <coughs> um, there is one thing to be aware of. Um, when you install the Splunk forwarder with the UI, so you know, double click on the uh, Splunk forwarder XE, uh, it will bring you up some, uh, some UI dialogues. And within this dialogues, you can actually choose um, uh, like what event logs should be retrieved and a couple of um, performance metrics that should be also retrieved and so on and so forth. Um, this is actually additionally um, on, um, on the forwarder then, and um, it's not collected with the Windows TA configuration. So if you add the Windows TA on top of this manually installed uh, forwarder with all the tick boxes of event logs and stuff, you will have double of data, which is not, of course, not really useful. Huh? So I, I would always recommend you to um, do a, so to say, um, uh, normal install of the forwarder without all these tick boxes for the Windows configuration and do the Windows data onboarding um, in the Windows TA, like I'm going to show you in the demo. So this is about the deployment. Um, the documentation is quite good about where you have to put in this add-on because um, the add-on is, of course, important for the universal forwarder because it would tell you which data to um, ingest. But you also need this maybe on other components if you have a distributed environment like remote Splunk server and remote search ads. You see the list here um, where you need to place the Windows TA on, for example, on the search ads as well because the Windows TA actually comes with uh, something what we call knowledge objects. I guess you heard about this term already. Um, these knowledge objects are needed um, so that you can extract um, the data easily by a search. So like, for example, feed extractions and feed aliases and so on and so forth. Um, this is what you need um, to, make, um, yeah, to make more use of the data uh, that comes from Windows into Splunk.
in the demo, I will cover how the uh, stanzas will look like. The stanzas are the ones that you can actually um, see which kind of um, items are being retrieved from Windows. So, for example, how does how does it look like to retrieve event logs? And also, how does it look like to retrieve path one data or WMI and stuff like this? So everything is in one file. I'm going to show you this. Um, but um, you can actually see also on your Windows environment how this would look like on the Windows environment so they can compare things, right? So I talked about this uh, path one exe um, already. Um, so this is the, um, um, the performance metrics from Windows that you can check. And there's the event viewer um, on the Microsoft world where you can actually um, see the Windows event logs, so to say, that are coming in. And here we have the examples, right? Um, so this one um, on the left is for the application log from Windows. Um, the important bit is the disabled equal to zero. I'm going to touch this in the demo as well. This is where you turn on and off the stanza. Yeah, stanza is always in this bracket. And disabled equal to zero means it is enabled, so it will be retrieved by the forwarder on the basis of this uh, configuration and uh, will be sent then to the Splunk indexer. Um, when Hostmon um, is another item, um, you can actually uh, see all these configurations, all these items in the documentation of the Windows TA. They are very good documented. Okay, so let me just switch gears. Give me a second, and I will switch to another computer for the live demo. All right. Okay, so let's start with the demo. Um, yeah, I prepared a little bit, a little bit of things here. Um, one of the one of the things is I've downloaded, of course, the Splunk forwarder here onto my Windows server. And um, I also have downloaded the Windows add-on for Windows uh, for Microsoft Windows. <clears throat> I also extracted it and I created myself a little batch script to make things easier for me. So this is why I, uh, why I put all the stuff in. This is the Splunk TA for Windows. And um, I already extracted this file. So you extract the target EZ file. And this is what you get, this directory here. This has all the stuff that we need. And this is the forwarder that I've downloaded from Splunk.com before. And this is the little batch script that I created. So let's have a look into this. Edit. So it's calling MSI exec. So the Microsoft installer installing this Splunk forwarder here, this package. And um, I provide an install directory. Um, I don't use the default one. I use this, PL, uh, this one here, this SPLK FWD just to make things easier for me. And uh, I send all the data to the remote Splunk server. So this needs to be resolvable, of course, otherwise it won't work. Um, Splunk password for the, um, for the forward itself, agree to license, and then I want this to have quiet, uh, right, no UI, so to say, unattended install. So I start up this batch. Now it's working in the backend. I can actually check, um, a couple of things. So, for example, is the remote Splunk server actually up and running? It's responding to ICMP. I don't know if the um, 997 TCP connection would um, work, of course, with with uh, with this uh, ping check, but um, at least it tells me that the connection is there. Um, then I also check for the host name. That's the host name. So this is how um, the event should come in. And this uh, forward is already um, up and running. So the batch script is already finished. So now I use this directory here. I copy it over to the C drive, SPLK FWD. And it has to be um, placed into the Etsy apps directory. This is where all the uh, TAs go into. 
So I'm copying over this directory. I go in there. And now I have the default directory and all the other stuff. And the default one is the interesting bits and pieces. The way how you do it and the way how it is written in the, direct, in the documentation as well is that you create a local directory and you put in the files that you amend, that you change. So for example, the inputs conf, this is the file that has all the configuration stanzas. Um, I copy over this file and put it into local, right? And then I do my changes there, not underneath the default uh, directory. Um, the changes should always go into local and the corresponding conf file. So for example, in this case, inputs conf um, um, or any other, any other config that you know that you want to change. Now I do, uh, now I do edit. Um, yeah, I'm reloading it. <laughs> so this is my Notepad Plus here. And um, these are the, you know, the stanzas. So this one is the stanza, for example, for the application log, the Windows application log. This is the one for security. And um, yeah, of course, down below there are more stanzas, not only for the not only for the Windows event log, but also, for example, for any like registry keys and other log files that are important. Batch executions, PowerShell executions are there. Um, also, performance metrics. So, WinPathmon, right? So, if you execute Pathmon on the um, uh, on Windows, so the the uh, performance browser of Microsoft for Windows, then um, <clears throat> you see all the metrics in there, and these are the same metrics that you can also ingest with Slack when you have the current responding stanza here in this inputs conf. Um, the important bit here uh, here is the disabled line, right? So it says disable equal to one, and you need to change this to, um, to disable equal to zero to enable it, right? So you do, for example, replace. I do this this way. Of course, you can just uh, turn on the ones that you are interested in. Uh, for my case, I'm um, enabling all 48 stanzas there. And of course, I have to, uh, have to hit save. Right? Don't forget to hit save. And that's it. Now I'll check here my, um, um, my services browser of Windows. And you should have a Splunk forwarder service here. This is what the um, installer does automatically. It can create this uh, Splunk forwarder service. And now I'm restarting this Splunk forwarder service. It takes a little bit of time. And while doing this, oh, I already did it. I can bring up my browser again and connect to my, um, yeah, to my Splunk instance here. And uh, I need to check, of course, the host name a bit uh, correctly. So it says 2M, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, I need to change this here to a tool. And let's see if I already get some data, for example, in the last, um, like for example, two minutes, apply. And there we are. We're starting to get data. Lots of data, <laughs> of course, because I, um, I enabled all the stances there. Um, so I can have a look at the source types. There's the WinNetmon um, uh, source type. There is performance entries there. The install apps get also into, uh, into Splunk as well. When print on path on a path on, uh, stuff in there, so the um, CPU, for example, and, um, and such. So lots of data in there, and um, of course um, you can also do an average on the um, on the performance here. So the processor time here um, um, on the data that is coming in. So easy stuff, and of course zoom into this. So um, that's it pretty much. So that's what we did. Um, and uh, when you've done this, um, yeah, you're free to have a look at the data yourself and, and see what is going on. And by the way, um, don't get mixed by this one here. Um, this is actually showing that a lot of buckets get created here. Um, this is because of my little setup here. I'm doing other stuff there as well. So um, this is it. This is the demo. Uh, so let's go back. 
Okay, now we are back in the presentation. And um, yeah, this is the auto install with a batch call. I like this term here. <laughs> so this is about, um, this is a written thing about uh, how you would install automatically a Splunk forwarder with a patch script. Um, I think it was easier to read here than in the demo. All right, now I am handing it over to Caitlin. Great. Thank you so much, Henning, for walking us through that demo and presentation. It was a pleasure. <laughs> so we're almost at the end of the talk. I wanted to share a quick recap slide of the resources shared during the talk. Um, and this will also be available in a follow-up email, which will be, have the recorded webinar as well. If you're looking for more after this talk, check out our incredible community of Splunk users on our community site where there's a Q&A section and you can search the Windows TA. There's also a new discussion section with IT Tech Talks as well as Splunk Ideas where you can submit new product enhancement ideas. Great, we're all wrapped up for today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to join us and thank you Henning for that presentation demo. We're looking forward to seeing you at a future IT Tech Talk coming soon.